Hello students, this is your professor Dr. Mink and this is a demonstration that will describe and well display the keyboard status, data registers, the display status and data registers and how they're used by the LC3 for memory mapped I.O. So I've placed this program uh, which is slide 8-12 from lecture chapter 8 in the module and I'm going to ask you to put that in the assembler assemble it it's going to run fine and then load the object code into the LC3 and I have that all queued up here there's my there's my um, LC3 and there's my well I'll start it over I'll reinitialize the machine uh, Okay, so first thing we have is a trap X23, which is an in, which is actually an output input routine. It's going to take a string Z, which is with a standard prompt, and output that to the LC3 console. Then it's going to solicit, this is the input part, it's going to solicit a single ASCII keystroke. And we're going to watch all this, and then it's going to actually output something else, which is the question at the end of this demo. So I'm going to I'm going to use step over. You can step into this, but it's going to be very, very time consuming. Okay, so I'm going to step over, trap in. Now what do I see? Well look at the bottom of the LC3 simulator and you see the clock spinning up. Those are clock cycles. What is it doing? It's polling. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? It's waiting for the keyboard status register to change, which would mean that a key has been struck, struck and the ASCII equivalent of that key will be written in the keyboard data register. So I'm going to come over to the console and I'm going to strike the 7 key. Okay. Notice the polling has stopped. We stepped out of the trap or stepped over, trap in, and take a look where our cursor is. Okay. So now we're going to do a memory dump. We're going to save our memory contents to a file called memory.txt. We're going to go from FE00 to FE09. We're only interested in seeing the uh, memory mapped I.O. registers. Okay, and then I'm going to find this file, which I have right here. Already opened it. And I'm going to go back to our slide where we have a description of the memory mapped I.O. registers. So FE00 is zero. If we had stepped into the in routine and there is a specific instruction after the key is struck but before the next instruction is executed you'll see and you could dump memory at that point in time it's quite a laborious task but I suggest that you do it at least once you'll see bit 15 is one okay which means a new key has been struck and the uh, input routine has not yet cleared that flag, i.e. moved or copied the value, the ASCII value, in the keyboard data register, which is FE02. Remember, ASCII is an 8-bit code. So bits 0 through 7 are going to contain the ASCII equivalent of that keystroke. On the outside, we also have, on the output side, we also have the display status register, Bit 15 is 1 when the device is ready. That's FE04. FE04 is ready. Okay, remember we finished the end, we jumped over the entire routine. And FE06, the display data register now holds hex 000A, which is a 10. Why? Okay, well, let's go back. What does FE02 hold? It holds 
Hex 37. Hex 37, or this 8-bit ASCII equivalent, is the ASCII equivalent of decimal 7. Now remember, I told you earlier in the class that ASCII was going to be a problem because there is a shift or an offset between the decimal numeric 0 and the character 0. And that offset is hex 30, which is also a decimal 48. So 37, hex 37, is the ASCII equivalent of 7. The 7 key was struck. And there it is in the keyboard data register. So what I want you to tell me is, well, why? Why is there 000A? Zero, zero, zero now, I'm not going to tell you. And if you just end this video and move forward because you're time constrained, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You really need to understand this. You need to be able to answer this to yourself. Let's go back, take a look at the console. Why is there a hex 000A in the display data register? Think about it. I'm done.